<clears throat> okay, as quickly as possible, um, we want to go over the final part of this unit. And the final part is if we give you a graph, can you write the equation? And I'm going to do this problem from the notes. I'm going to do it two ways. So what the steps here are um, telling you to do is they're telling you that obviously this is an absolute value, so you notice right here they've got um, what we would call kind of an empty absolute value function. There's no numbers filled in yet for H, for K, and for A. And remember H and K are the two numbers that are going to move your graph left and right and up and down. So the first thing they notice is they notice the location of the vertex. The transformations will move that vertex. And remember on your parent function, the vertex sits right here, and then your parent function goes up with a slope of 1, and then down with a slope of negative 1. Okay, so that's what your parent function would have looked like if they had given it to you. And so our vertex has moved, and now our vertex is right here at the point 1, 2. So the first thing that they do is they substitute for that. And I don't have a ton of room to write, but with an x-coordinate of 1, so it's going to show up as x minus 1, because remember, insiders lie, and a y-coordinate of 2. So there's going to be a plus 2 right there. And so that's what they told you to do right there. They said substitute 1 for h and 2 for k. And then <clears throat> what they had you do was they had you choose another point on the graph. It says for an additional point, and you can choose any one you want to. What they chose was the x-intercept negative 3, 0, so they chose this point right here. Um, and what they did is they plugged it into the equation, so they tell you to do that right here. It says substitute negative 3 for x and 0 for y. Okay, and so I'm going to plug in the negative 3 for the x right there, and I'm going to plug in the 0 for y. So the only thing that would not be filled in to this equation is the a. And so then what it says to do is to simplify. So I had 0 over here, and on the right side I have my a. That's what I'm trying to solve for. Inside the absolute value I now have a negative 3 right here, minus 1, so I have negative 4 and then I have the plus 2 at the end. And so I'm going to solve this, okay? So it says to subtract 2. I'm going to take the 2 and move it to the left side. The other thing I'm going to do, even though it doesn't say it, is I'm going to go ahead and take the absolute value of negative 4. And the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4, so it's positive 4 times a. And then I'm going to solve for a. So I would divide by 4 to do that. And so a would be negative 2 divided by 4, which would reduce and become negative 1 half. Okay? And so what that means is that the final equation is we've just solved for a. a was the number out in front of our absolute value, so that's our negative 1 half. And then our h was x minus 1. 1, and this was plus 2. So you've got the equation for that transformed absolute value graph. Okay? Now you can also do it more graphically than algebraically. So here's a clean picture of that same problem. And instead of doing all this algebra over here, what you could do is you know you have y, you're going to look for that a value, just differently this time. We need to plug in our h value still, and we need to plug in our k value still. And the first part is still the same. I still locate the vertex, because remember how I mentioned today in class that <clears throat> most of our functions have a starting point right here at 0, 0, and h and k are the only two numbers that will do anything to it, the only two that will move it. So. The fact that this is the point 1, 2 tells me that I'm still going to have a minus 1 and a plus 2 here. So that part's the same. So the only thing left to find is A, but this time I'm going to look at it more graphically than algebraically. 
And that does require that you remember your parent function. So remember once again, your parent function started here and each side had a slope of one. It's just that this side had a slope of positive one. So it went right one and up one every step. And technically this one has a slope of negative one. I know that I usually draw it backwards from the vertex, but from left to right it's going down. Okay, so the slope is negative one. Well, all you have to do is compare the slope of those lines um, because that will tell you any dilation factor. So instead of having a slope of one, so here's my vertex, right? Normally, to the right of my vertex, I'm going up. Well, now I notice to the right of my vertex, I'm going down. So I know it's A is going to be negative. And normally to the right of the vertex, my slope is one. It's rise one and run one every step. Well, now I have to run two and drop one. So my slope is negative one half. And so that negative one half that we got algebraically before can also be determined by the slope of the absolute value. Now, that only works for absolute value. The, the notion behind being able to tell the shape of the graph works for everything, but absolute value is the only graph that has lines to the left and to the right, and so that's why I kept calling it slope. Okay, so we're going to look at one of those homework problems we just went over today. So this was question 13 on the homework we just checked the, that we returned and checked the answers to today. And so I know that you guys have this worksheet and the equation's already written up above. That's why I didn't take a picture of it. I'm going to write the equation as if we didn't know it. So if I was just given the graph, okay, I'm looking for my A value. I know that this is a square root equation, so put a big square root. I know that I need to find my H and my K, okay, H and K. And so once again, remember you've got to remember your parent functions. Your parent square root starts right here, and on the library you were supposed to do the, the table. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2, and so this is what your parent graph would have looked like. Okay, well once again, that, that parent graph starts at 0, 0, so the only thing that's going to change that is my h and my k. So I just have to figure out, okay, well where did it move to? So this graph moved, one, it moved over here to the left 4, and it moved down 2. So I'm going to put a 4, and I'm going to put a 2. And then I just have to remember which one is going to be positive and which is going to be negative. So remember, insiders lie. If I went left 4, it's going to show up as a plus 4 in the equation. And if I went down 2, it's going to show up as a minus 2 in the equation. Because vertical transformations don't lie. Okay? And then the only other thing left to do is to figure out what this A value right here is. And so, since we don't have slope, because this is not a line, what we do is we look at the shape of the graph. Okay, so, let me change colors so it stands out a little bit better. Okay, so, on my parent square root, when I went one unit to the right, I went one unit up. Okay, and when I went four units to the right, I went two units up. So what I do is I look at the shape here. Here's my starting point, my initial point. When I go one unit to the right now, I don't just go one unit up, I go two units up. And so that means my graph is twice as tall, and so my A is two. And you can always confirm that because you had this other point over here. So I remember when we went four to the right, we went two up. So let's try that. We go one, two, three, four to the right. And instead of going two up, we're supposed to go twice as far, supposedly, so you would confirm that you actually go 4 up. And that's what confirms that your A value here is 2. And that matches the equation that was on that homework worksheet. Okay? So I hope that, uh, that this is coming back to you guys, that you remember this from Algebra 2. Um, remember that Monday is our review day. Uh, you can always come in for tutoring anytime you need to. 
Um, if you have very last minute questions, you could always come in on Tuesday for flex too, but I don't want to leave it that long. So um, hopefully you guys will be ready to ask questions and get help if you need it Monday in class. Thanks. Have a good weekend.